The Gospel reading today, our Lord tells us that where our treasure is, there also will our heart be. Obviously, we can look at that and recognize that he is speaking about heaven, but we can look at it from an even more particular point of view. Jesus, that's where our treasure is. It is the Lord. That's where our heart is to be, is the Lord. And I say that simply to say that if that is the case, then we are to live our lives in this world as Christ lived his. Because if we just simply talk about our treasure being in heaven, well, we can't exactly say we live our lives in this world as the people in heaven live their lives. That's what we're striving for, but we can actually take one from heaven who lived in this world, and we can say, that's how we're to live our lives. That's exactly what St. Paul talks about. When we look back at our Lord and we look at St. Paul's life as he became conformed to Christ, he said, we're reviled and we bless. We're persecuted and we bear with it. We're maligned and we entreat. We become the refuse of the world, the offscouring of all. So we can ask ourselves, when we're reviled, how do we handle that? Do we attack back? Do we call people names? Do we treat them badly or do we bless them? Because that's what we're told to do. But most of us don't because that's not what comes natural to us. But if Christ is our treasure and Christ is where our heart is, then we're not operating merely on a natural level. He's asking us to operate on a supernatural level. He's asking us to do what he did. That is to bless our persecutors, to bless those who will revile us. When we're persecuted, St. Paul says, we bear with it. Do we? Can think of the person that we're celebrating, whose feast we're celebrating today. He started a religious order specifically for the purpose of exchanging themselves for Christian slaves to ransom the slaves by saying, we will be your slaves, let these guys go. Let them go back to their families. We will be your slave. That's the very reason that these people entered the order, was to be treated, not just treated as, but to literally become slaves. So talk about persecuted and bearing with it. That's what they did. But we're told to rejoice when we're persecuted. Not many of us do that either. And so again, we continue on and we say we're maligned and we, retreat and we entreat. Do we? When people malign us, is that our reaction? You see, I think if we really are honest about this, we'd have to be able to say, where is my treasure if I put it personally? Sadly, right here, I'm looking at me. And because I'm looking at me and not at Jesus, guess what? I act like me. When I'm maligned, I'll malign back. When I'm persecuted, I feel like somehow I'm justified in persecuting somebody else. When I'm reviled, well, I can call people all kinds of names and think that I'm justified in doing it because look what they did to me. It's because my treasure is myself and not Jesus. So we really need to look at this and go back to what they used to say that talk is cheap. If our treasure is in heaven, if our treasure is Jesus Christ, we can't just talk about it. St. James even said that. We can't just talk about it. We have to be doers of the word. We can't just listen to it and let it go in one ear and out the other. We can't just talk about it and make it sound real nice. We have to live it. And we all know that that we can talk till we're blue in the face, but it's our actions that are going to really point out what's in the heart. 
So if our actions are not in conformity with Christ, then our heart is not entirely focused on Christ. That's where we need to make the adjustment. So we'd like to be able to say that my heart is on Christ. He is my treasure. He is the one who I'm seeking with my whole heart and soul and strength. And then when we're reviled and when we're maligned and when we're persecuted, then we find out where our treasure really is, or at least where our heart really is. And so if the heart is stuck on ourselves, we need to get it on Christ. Because remember, as I have told you many, many times, the difference between heaven and hell. Heaven, you're focused on the Lord. Hell, you're focused on yourself. So if our heart is on ourselves rather than on Christ, where are we preparing for eternity? So we'd say that we want to go to heaven, but we're certainly not living that way. We say that we want Jesus and we want union with him, but then we act in exactly the opposite way, and the one we're seeking union with is the one we say we don't want anything to do with. So that's the part we have to realize again, what are the consequences of these things? Because who is it that's going to be standing right next to it to us saying, you are justified in your anger. You are justified in attacking these people. You are justified in calling them names. You are justified because treat others the way they treat you. Oh, I don't think that's quite what Jesus said, but it sure sounds a whole lot better when someone treats us badly, doesn't it? Yeah, do unto others before they do it to you. No, that's not what he said either. So if we're going to be doers of the word, we need to put our heart on Jesus first, and then we need to conform our lives to Christ so that we are acting as he does. So that when St. Paul says, be imitators of us as we are imitators of Christ, it's exactly what it's about. But it's not just ultimately imitating Christ. It may start that way. It's ultimately to be conformed to Christ. It is not just imitating him from afar, but getting ourselves so perfectly united with him that is he who can live in us. That's what it is that we desire. Because when we have that perfect union with him, then our heart truly is on Christ. Then our heart truly is in heaven. That's where our treasure is. That's where our heart is going to be.